I can see a white flag down there. Okay, that says uh, 22. That's part of the evidence in So that would have been like evidence item number 22? Yep. Oil yep. bottle, got it. And, and obviously the oil bottle's been collected, the flag was left. So I think we're in the right area, we just gotta keep going down. All right. I'm glad they left it as a marker for us all these yeah, years later. Yeah, certainly helps uh, it get helps us back us down now. here. Identifying where our Jane Doe's body was found decades ago helps me not only better understand what happened to her, but more importantly, who our killer could be. We searched any missing female in this area and other states. We had an original lead that came in. We got a gentleman called in from Salem and said that his ex-wife had came into town and had called wanting to see her son, but she never came to get him. And he said she had black hair. She was like in her 40s. It's the same hair color and age as our Jane Doe, but that's not all. The missing woman also had a scar on her forehead we thought, okay, well, she was here and she disappeared. It was right in the proper time frame. Come to find out she had caught a trucker riding with him interstate. We were able to trace that lady back to Arkansas to a little town of 380 some people and she ended up living with him. She was still alive. Yes. It's a dead end. DNA you inherit from your parents. Um, so it's the DNA that makes up the code for everything about you. Most of our DNA is the same, but there are differences. So this is like a single letter changing in a word. So you might have an A at one point and I would have a T, and you can use those differences on a much finer scale to look for relatives. The value of this research and the value of the DNA testing is something a small agency like ours just wouldn't have been able to, to pay for. We sent DNA Solutions one of Jane Doe's bones to extract her DNA, but we are told it may not be that simple. The body had been found in 1996, above ground, and it had been exposed to the elements. Skeletal remains differ a lot in their condition. Um, some of them are very degraded. Bones that have been exposed to the elements, it's really hard to get enough DNA out. Even so, we needed Dr. Anstead to try. In terms of sample type for skeletal remains, the weight-bearing bones are better, and so we generally request a femur. Our job is to get enough DNA out of the bone to produce a profile. Heat will destroy the DNA, so you have to drill at a low speed, and you want some relatively coarse pieces of bone that you can extract from. For this sample, we had um, got a one nanogram of DNA degraded, and that's always disappointing. I couldn't let this setback stop me from identifying Jane Doe and giving her back to her family. We needed Dr. Onstead to try. Again. The first extraction, we didn't get enough DNA. So we went back and we did a second extraction. We would aim for about 10 nanograms, so about 10 times more than we had. We drilled some more spots and we might have hit somewhere that had more DNA. It took us about a month to process the sample. More than two decades after our Jane Doe's remains were found, we had her DNA profile. It's essentially a text file with 850,000 rows of information. It says the location and then it says which letter they have at that location. The more closely related you are to somebody, the more of those that will be the same. If you took that data and you printed it out, it would take a lot of pieces of paper. I'm trying to think. <laughs> take like, so it'd be like 2,000 pages of information, so it would be a stack like this tall. So they can take that profile and they're going to upload it to a search genealogy site and then it's going to compare those 850,000 letters to everybody else. This is a critical step to help us rebuild her identity.